this video is about the soil properties that involve water. Before we talk about the soil though, we have to go over some basic chemistry. And I'm going to need you to accept this information at face value because honestly, I'm not good enough at chemistry to explain it any more than that. First, what is water anyway? Water is made up of water molecules that have two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. They bond together because they're sharing electrons, which are negatively charged particles. The shape of the molecule has the two hydrogens hanging out on the same side of the oxygen. But even though there's two of them, the oxygen is still technically stronger. And so these electrons tend to hang out more on the oxygen side. Because the electrons, the negatively charged particles, are more on the oxygen side, that side tends to be negative and the hydrogen side tends to be positive. You've heard the saying, opposites attract. The positive side with the hydrogen will attract negatively charged particles, while the negative oxygen side will attract positively charged particles. The goal is for the charges to balance out so that the molecule is stable. This makes water very powerful for dissolving things and sticking to different surfaces because it's got a charge on both sides. Also, the hydrogen on one water molecule will also bond with the oxygen of a different one, and this forms a water chain. And this bonding is responsible for these two forces called adhesion and cohesion. Adhesion means that the water sticks to solid surfaces. Cohesion means they stick to each other. A water molecule will stick to the surface of solid soil particles, especially clays, which have a negative charge. Other molecules will attach to that first water molecule by cohesion. The further the water molecules are from that actual surface, the weaker they are bonded to the surface and the more likely that they'll get detached. These two forces also explain capillary action, which is how water moves through a tube or some other small space. The water molecules both stick to the side of the tube through adhesion and also to each other through cohesion. And the narrower your tube, the more that water is going to rise up. This applies to other small spaces like micropores versus macropores, the water is going to move further through those micropores. So that was all background. Now we're actually moving on to the soil water part. Remember that a soil doesn't just consist of solid particles. There's also pore spaces that get filled up with air or water. Right after a rain or a heavy irrigation, if all those pores are filled with water, the soil is described as being saturated. It's fine if the soil is saturated for a short amount of time, but if it lasts for an extended amount of time, plants will start to suffer because they need oxygen to their roots. And if the water is filling up the pores, the oxygen cannot enter. Soon after the rain or the watering stops, the water that is in the largest pores will drain out under gravity. The water molecules that are more so in the center of those big pores are really weakly bonded to the surface and so they end up draining out. It leaves the water molecules that are closer to the surface of the solid particles that are held there by cohesion. This water that drains out under gravity is called gravitational water and this is where most of the leaching happens washing out small particles and nutrients. After the gravitational water drains out, the soil is at field capacity. The air can come back to the macropores, but there's still water being held inside the micropores for plants to use. That remaining water is called capillary water, which is water that's being held and that moves through these narrow spaces. This field capacity is a good moisture state for plants. There's both air and water. If you're digging, this is also good for you because that bit of water acts as a lubricant and helps break up the soil more easily, but it's not soggy. If you do any kind of air spade or air knife work, you definitely need to pre-moisten the area where you're digging and give it time to drain out to make the process a lot easier. From this point on, plants are continuing to use water 
and the soil gets drier and drier. As the soil gets dried out, the remaining water gets more tightly bound to those soil particles and it takes a lot more energy for the plant to be able to get that water. If there isn't enough water, plants will wilt temporarily during the day and recover at night, rehydrate their leaves. At some point, the plant will no longer be able to recover at night because there simply is not enough water and it will remain permanently wilted unless more water is added to the soil. This is called the permanent wilting point. The amount of water that is accessible between the field capacity and the permanent wilting point is called available water because that's what's available for plants to take up. In case you're wondering how that's different from capillary water, there is still a bit of water left in the soil beyond the permanent wilting point, which is still considered capillary water. It's just held too tightly for plants to get. The last term I have is water holding capacity. It's a soil's capacity to hold available water for plants to use. It's affected by soil texture and organic matter. If you have a soil that's too sandy, there's a lot of large macro pores and those will drain out under gravity. If you have a soil that has too much clay in it, even though that soil does hold more water than the sandy soil, it holds it so tightly that the plant roots can't take it up. So you do want more of a loam type soil that's a good mix of sand, silt, and clay with organic matter. The organic matter really helps because it contributes to good structure, forming aggregates, and when it's finally broken down into its final state, it's got really high surface area and it really will hold that nutrient and water for the plants. So as with all my other soil videos, the solution is add more organic matter. These terms and concepts will come back in chapter four, which is water management.